Hi everybody, welcome to the deep dive. Today we're talking about night diving. Things to consider, some do's and don'ts. Personally, I love a good night dive. I find them very, very different to normal dives. A bit more, bit more personal in a, in a way because a lot of the peripheral is just completely dark. All of your focus is just on what's in front of you and, and in your torch beam. In a weird way, they, they sound different, I think. Uh, you get the normal background noise on a, on a day dive, all that kind of clicking and stuff, but on a night dive, they just, they just sound different. So mm, uh, let's think about night diving. Uh, obviously, this isn't an accredited certification by watching this video or anything, but here is a beginner's guide to night diving. The obvious one, um, it's dark at night. You're gonna need some kind of illumination to see and be seen as well. Every diver should have their own torch so that they can see where they're going. It's very easy to get turned around in the dark, even with a decent torch. When you can't see much outside of your torch beam, it's really easy to just get lost. So you need to take that into account and kind of slow yourself down when you're diving at night. Consult your compass quite often and pay attention to distances traveled. It is really easy to get lost on a night dive. Torches themselves, they're usually a spotlight or a floodlight. Spotlights are great for piercing through the water, really going the distance and illuminating one particular spot. But only that one spot. Floodlights, they do illuminate a lot, but only by a little amount because they're spreading the same amount of light over an entire area and you're going to blind everyone in front of you. So you're not going to be the most popular at a dive site if you turn up with a floodlight. Just because you can see something also doesn't necessarily mean that other divers can identify you. It's like driving at night. You can see the headlights of the car coming the other way, but you can't tell the color or the model of the car because the light's too bright. You can't actually see the car itself. So you need to make it a little bit easier at times for other divers to be able to see and identify you. Some divers, they'll often use a small beacon or like a chemical glow stick light on the back of their tank just to help them stand out or be identified or simply shine your torch on yourself for a moment or two when facing another diver just so that they can confirm exactly who they're looking at and communicating with. If you do need to communicate, try and shine your torch on your hand so that they can actually see any hand signals instead of just throwing up a, a black glove in front of a black wetsuit at night in the dark. Yeah, um, it's it's very dark. Uh, you on the surface are pretty hard to spot by a boat traveling at really any speed at the best of times, even during the day. Just your head sticking above the water is nothing to a boat. So in pitch black darkness, don't leave it to luck. If you're sending up a DSMB, then attach a light of some sort to it so that the SMB stands out on the surface. Once you're on the surface with the DSMB, you can either shine your torch around, uh, shine your torch towards any noises that you can hear, something that sounds like a boat, or you can actually shine that torch into the SMB and that can actually make the entire thing glow so that boats can better see it on the surface. One thing to remember is that sometimes torches fail. The best practice is to actually turn your torch on just before you start the dive. So switch it on and then you don't turn it off until the very end of the dive. Playing around with switches while submerged means that there's actually no guarantee that when you flick that switch back on, your torch will actually turn back on. So if it's working, leave it working. If you do need to dim the light for whatever reason, then try and cover it up with your hand or kind of shine it into your gauges so at least the light is charging them up so that they glow in the dark later. If your torch ever does die during a dive, I mean, it's happened to me before, sometimes they do just die, they flood or they just run out of battery. That's why you should really dive with a backup, a second torch. It's not some sales ploy to sell more torches. Backup torches are a real lifesaver. Doesn't need to be anything overly fancy or powerful, just something that works when you need it to, just in case your primary fails. The sun brings warmth. Uh, I don't think there's any online community out there who doubts that. 
yet, but at night it does start to get cold. The water is pretty good at holding warmth from the day for a while after sunset, but as soon as the sun does start to go down, the water temperature will start to drop, but the air temperature more so. Plan to wrap yourself up and dry yourself off after the dive, because when you take that wetsuit off, it gets really cold, especially at night. You may need to wear a little extra uh, sort of more exposure protection at night as well compared to the same dive site at night the or even during the day the the water temperature might only drop a degree or two between the day and night but i promise you you will notice those two degrees sure you might be a roughy tufty diver who can take the cold but it actually affects your decompression um, it doesn't matter if you can take the discomfort of being a little chilly, but you can't control the reduction in blood flow to your extremities by just gritting your teeth. It's, it's important to be warm on the dive so that you decompress properly. Night dives traditionally occur at night, which doesn't matter too much in the water, but you do need to consider that some things may not be open or accessible at that time of day. Hospitals, hyperbaric chambers in certain areas, they're not open 24 seven. So should something go wrong on the dive, treatment could be delayed and you need to take that into account. No diver ever plans to have an accident, but it's rare that accidents happen according to plan. So what you need to do is plan your night dive as if something bad will happen. That way you look into where the nearest chamber is, uh, when it opens or closes, and how you'd get there, how long it will take you to get there. I mean, when we used to run night dives when I was working abroad, we used to run those night dives in the very early mornings instead of last thing at night. The local chamber was closed at night. So at like 4 or 5 a.m. when we were actually doing the night dives, by the time that we got out of the water and then over to the local town, the hospital would be opening. If we had a problem at 9, 10 o'clock at night, when most people do some night dives, we'd have to actually wait until the following morning to get any kind of treatment. So we adjusted our dive plan accordingly and considered, hey, it's closed. Maybe we shouldn't do it at 9, 10 o'clock at night. A good friend of mine used to say that night dives mean that the night shift comes out, which is very true. Most of the fish that are out during the day, they kind of hide away in the reef at night. And all of those fish and things that are tucked away during the day, they come out at night. Most things aren't huge fans of powerful lights during the dark. So when you're exploring, just consider how you'd feel about someone shining a 2000 lumen light in your face when you're on the night shift or sleeping in your bed. You're going to show you're going to shine your torch on something. It happens, including divers, but try not to linger. If you do shine something in someone's face, oh, sorry, don't just shine it in things' faces. If you need to point something out, draw a circle around it with your torch beam, not directly at the thing itself. For sleeping fish, if you shine a torch and you wake them up, many of them, they won't go back to sleep for the rest of the night. And that's just a not a really nice thing to do. Others, you're shining a torch in their eyes. Now they're dazzled and they can't see. And worse, predators in the area can actually see this highlighted fish. So they're blind and they can't see something that's trying to eat it. Some species of predators have actually learned to hang around scuba divers because they've learned that we shine our torches at interesting things underwater and the small fish that we're shining them on, they can't see them coming when we shine their torches. So ugh, don't do that. And don't shine your torch in the eyes of other divers. It's just not the done thing. And there are just a few things that you need to consider when jumping under the water in the dark. The main thing to remember is that you need to be seen as much as you can actually see in the dark. The dark and time of day are just an additional complication that you really do need to account for when you're night diving. And it's not just the same as any day dive, just dark. Things are different. Procedures need to be different when you're doing a night dive. So don't just jump into a night dive without thinking things through. Remember to check out the Two Minute Foundation. They do some amazing things to clean up our beaches and they have a free app as well that you can use to help out. And of course, check out our merch store on the banner underneath this video. The promo code SURFACE15 will give you a special little something that you can use at the checkout. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving. Music